jazz guitar aficionado Sandro Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. The Sire H7 was recommended to me by several folks on the channel. It supposedly has great quality for only $659. And there's actually a lot of talk about it on social media. So let's see what the buzz is all about. The Sire Carlton H7 is actually a Gibson ES335 clone, and that's the guitar Larry Carlton is associated with. He even named a song Room 335. So it comes to no surprise that Larry Carlton partnered up with Sire to get his own guitar model in the Sire lineup. He gave them his favorite Gibson ES335 to match its specifications. We have a 16 inch low about and a very skinny 1.73 inch that's 4.5 cm body depth. The way the body is shaped makes me raise my shoulders. I'm used to playing like this more and now I have to go up like this. But then again I'm only 5'5 five five, so everyone who is taller than 5'5 five five should be okay with an, uh, with an ES335 body shape. As for woods, the top is maple, in this case a beautifully flamed maple. Also the sides and back are maple and we have a maple center block. So this is a semi hollow body construction. The center block prevents feedback and enables more sustain. The neck is a very fat and round C shape. When I saw this the first time I thought, oh my god what a fat neck for my tiny hands but it has become one of my favorites. It doesn't feel fat at all. There is not much of a shoulder on this neck and so I can perfectly wrap my small thumb around it. And the best is they rounded the fretboard edges really well so it won't hurt your thumb. I have a $4,500 Heritage H575 guitar with sharp fretboard edges that really hurt. Also, the medium jumbo frets are very well rounded, absolutely no fret sprout. Unfortunately, they didn't polish the frets at all. On some frets, the nickel came off. So the first thing I did was to polish the frets. Now they are all shiny and smooth. The neck is made from mahogany with an uh, ebony fingerboard. We have the usual 24.75 scale length and a 12 inch fretboard radius. To my surprise, the nut width is extremely narrow. This is a 40 millimeter, uh, which is 1.57 uh, nut width. And that means that the string spacing is extremely narrow as well. So from one string to the next, you don't have much uh, real estate. Most Gibsons have at least a 43 millimeter, which is I think 1.669, yeah, I'm cheating, 1.69 um, inch. And even for me with my small hands, this is getting, uh, some, needs some time getting used to it. Let's take a look at the hardware before we hear some sounds. The tuners are fantastic. They're absolutely smooth and allow for precise tuning. The pickups are Larry Carlton Vintage and I didn't measure the output, but it must be very low. Let's check the sound on this baby. Let's turn everything up to uh, 10. Mm, okay. It's not bad. It's not a master of, vol uh, of, of low end. This is pretty thin. Up until the D string. By the way, those are brand new to Master Ginfeld. And it starts getting good on from the G string on. So that's, I think, where this guitar shines. In the middle to high area. strings the lower you get the less volume there is 
doesn't have to be a bad thing per se because in a band context you don't need that much low end that uh, the big jazz boxes have anyway. So it's good, it, it will cut through the mix perfectly well. When you play solo guitar alone, I mean chord melody arrangements, then I'm missing a little of that low end and the warmth. The general sound isn't very warm. It's not strident, harsh or, you know, fizzy or anything. I think it has a good overall sound for that price tag, but it could add that my ideal would be to have more low end and a little more warmth in the mid range and the high range. But I think it's a really good sound for, for $599 or $700. Mm, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a Seymour Duncan Seth Lover pickup in there. Let's see. So. And I, I bought the two with the two wires. And I also, also always buy, because they are really cheap, buy good pots. CTS pot, 500K, uh, a taper pot this is. Okay, uh, from all parts, buy two if you wanna change the neck pickup. So you have for these two. I don't, I'm not going to change the, um, the bridge pickup because I never use that anyway. But on this guitar, you actually, maybe I will use it because this is not, uh, you know, what I consider pure jazz guitar. Um, you can, this is a very versatile guitar. You can use it for rock music too. And, and maybe the bridge pickup isn't bad then either. But uh, since this is a jazz review, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna um, change the pickup for that Seth Lover, which has really the warmest sound I've ever heard. I have it in my uh, Heritage H575 guitar, and then it's a great uh, pickup. So I'm gonna have this changed, because I'm not gonna do this myself this time, because this, you know, you have to go through the F holes. It's a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna have this done, and then I come back and we have a one-on-one -on -one check with uh, the old pickup, the, the original pickup and the Seth Lover. The Sire H7 Larry Carlton is a stunning guitar for as little as $659 or currently 598 euros. And with a little setup and fret polishing you get a great guitar for the money. Did you actually like the original pickups or the Seymour Duncan Seth Lover pickups that I put in afterwards uh, better? Please let me know in the comment section below the video. Please also check out my gear recommendation playlist and I also have a link to this guitar and recommended gear also in the info box below the video. If you like this video, please give it a fat thumbs up. It really helps with the uh, visibility of this channel. Please share the love and the knowledge and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.